Hello everybody and welcome to the Grief Gang Young and Bereaved. With me, your host, Amber Jeffrey, the creator and founder of the Grief Gang podcast. Um, it is an absolute honour and a privilege to have been asked by Good Grief Festival to host this talk. And none other than an opportunity to get involved and invite some fantastic people that not only have I been inspired by with their work that I've come to know and love and create such fantastic friendships with. Um, I'll give you a little bit of an intro about me and then I'm going to dive right into the intros of my guests because we've got some really great things to be talking about today and I can imagine the conversation is going to be going left, right and centre. So yeah, I'm Amber Jeffrey. I lost my mum, Sue Valentine, about four years ago, coming up five soon, um, in 2016 to a heart attack. I was 19 at the time. And as you can imagine, it's completely threw my world upside down and my family's. And I was met with this world of navigating a world without mum and being young with it and being quite alienated in my friendship circle in just everyday life. And so I plotted along for the first three years and I decided enough was enough. I need someone who looks like me, sounds like me, is like me and wants to talk about the nitty gritty stuff. And therefore, the Grief Gang page and podcast was born. And, you know, if you really want to hear the details, you can listen to the podcast. I'm not going to take up this hour slot doing that. Um, but along that journey, it began in September of 2019. Along that journey, I have created a community and I've met a wonderful community full of thousands of people wanting to make a difference and change the way that we speak about grief. And very gratefully you have got four people who are within that space being absolute change makers um, and like I said who have inspired me so without further ado I would like to introduce my panel so we have Jack Baxter, Benjamin May, Shuma Ralph and Nafisa Ashard. Um, hello guys how are we feeling? Good um, really good how are you? I'm good I mean the nerves are a little jittery but um, I'm sure we get into it um, it's going to be grand and I'm really really thankful that all of you agreed to be with me here on this panel and we're going to get into it so I'd love for us to go into um, a bit more about who you guys are who it is that you lost and what and what what and why you created what you did um, so Jack I'm going to throw the baton to you first please. Thanks AJ nice to meet everyone I'm Jack my name's Jack Baxter uh, my dad Dave died in September 2013 of skin cancer he was my my best friend this feels like a, a good grief introduction we run good grief meetings uh, at our charity I'll talk about that in a minute um as I said my dad Dave he was my best friend you know my confidant I was 22 when he died he was 48 I had the perfect relationship with him so when he died of skin cancer it kind of ripped my world in two and I didn't really know where I was going or what I was doing until I met Ben in uh, 2016, I think Ben will always correct me on that. I can't quite remember. He's shaking his head. He's not in his head. He's not sure either. Um, 2015. Anyway, um, we Ben cut my hair. Ben was my my barber, um, and you know I I spoke about my dad all the time, but I didn't necessarily have the people to to speak to about him that understood what I was feeling. You know, I've never been ashamed of my grief, but perhaps I was a little lost in the world trying to understand why it had happened and, and why I felt the way I did. And I sat in Ben's barber chair and he told me that his dad, Steve, was was sadly passing away of a, of a brain tumour. And we just bonded. We bonded over normal things first. We bonded over, you know, football and, and interests. But, um, you know, the fact that our dads were kind of on the same journey together as well, that, that really did help me, certainly. Um, you know, Ben and I were friends for a good three years before... I sat down with him at a restaurant in Hoxton and said, look, mate, this is great. I love you. I love talking to you about my dad. Let's see, you know, who else wants to speak with us? And, and Ben said, yeah, let's do it. And Ben had an idea of how that would look. And, and we took that into a, a community centre in Angel and we held our first good grief, uh, grief support group. So, yeah, we very much appreciate the name of, of, this, of this festival. Um, the good grief sessions looked like uh, a two hour sit down around a table with snacks in the middle and, and tissues because we encourage tears and people would come and they would speak to us about their loved ones so from May 2018 we launched Good Grief and um, that was going fantastically and then in 2019 we we picked that up and, and ran with it um, with a partnership with WeWork 
who uh, enabled us a space once a week. So we were running weekly meetings until the pandemic hit. And then um, we made the sensible decision to, to take our meetings online. And with that, the charity has kind of taken on this whole new um, life, if you like. It, it, it really has been reborn with all sorts of amazing spaces that have been created thanks to our amazing hosts, including Amber, um, for, for a number of communities and just to make sure everyone is, is heard. Um, so, you know, Good Grief is our, our bread and butter and, and off, off of that has come our black and brown sessions, our queer Good Grief sessions, our It's Complicated sessions, which are for the complicated grief. You know, your, your relationship may have been strained with your loved one. Uh, perhaps you lost that loved one to addiction. Um, then just something that, you know, doesn't fit right for you and makes it difficult for you to speak about. We have a space for that as well. And we've recently just launched, uh, launched Boys Talk and Girls Talk, which is a, a, a mental health arm of the charity. So, yeah, as, as I keep saying, it's it's certainly the privilege of my lifetime. I know Ben feels the same. I'm going to throw over to him. The reason we do it simply is just to carry on the legacy of our amazing dads. You know, I'll never stop talking about my dad till the day that I die. I will just make sure everyone I ever meet knows what an amazing man he was because he was, he was my best friend and I'm really, really honoured to be able to sit here and talk to you about him today. Oh no, thank you, Jack. And from, for me, from someone who I met Jack and Ben um, over a year ago, yeah, over a year ago now and going from just meeting you and doing a podcast with you and then the friendship that has blossomed from it and then witnessing the charity and being involved with the charity um, it's a true testament to to your fathers, and I'm very proud to know you both. Benny Boy, you're up. Uh, thanks, Amber. Um, as always, Jack's done such a fantastic job of kind of introing us and what we do and um, our relationship. So I won't bore people too much. But um, I'm Benjamin May. Um, I lost my dad, Steve, in August 2016 uh, to a brain tumour. Um, he was diagnosed 13 months before, which is when Jack walked into my barber shop. He actually came in, I think, about a week or two after my dad had been diagnosed. So it was pretty, um, it was good timing. Um, and uh, I won't call it fate, um, but it was very good timing. Um, Jack and I just were friends immediately. There was no question. Um, we, were, we were friends and, you know, very quickly we sort of, uh, realised that not only um, were our situations with our dad similar, you know, um, I was 30 when my dad passed away, Jack was a bit younger than me at 22, but the relationships that we had with them um, and the I, I, the similarities in that, I think, have been mirrored so much through our relationship and through our journeys with grief as well, actually. Um, you know, and uh, as Jack says, May 2018, we launched our first meeting, um, you know, and I think we're now, I think by the end of this month, we will have hosted 200 Good Grief uh, meetings or mental health meetings. Um, and by the end of this year, um, we'll have hosted over 400. Uh, so we now run 22, soon to be 23 meetings a, a month. So we've got six meetings a week. Um, you know, and you can tap into those virtually from all around the world. And, and, and that's what people are doing, um, which is really exciting. Um, where that goes, there's lots more. Um, I'm sure we'll touch on this in a little bit, Amber. I won't take up too much time because it'd be nice to intro the other two. Um, and Jack's already said so much. So um, I'll pass over and, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll speak about that in a bit. Yeah, absolutely. Do not worry that there's going to be so much information and the people who are watching, they should be fully clued up by the time this is done and they will be gagging for those sessions. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to pass over to Nafisa now, please. Hey, guys, um, I'm Nafisa Arshad and I'm a digital project manager. I'm a co-director of Masala Wala Cafe based in South London, um, which I co-run with my sisters. And also I'm the founder of Goodness Gracious Grief. Um, so basically I lost my sister, Simon Thompson, last year uh, back in June during the pandemic. And she was 31 when she passed away and I was still 23. And she passed away to stage four lung cancer, which I guess you think because you've got a terminal diagnosis, you should expect that. The passing was going to happen, but it was still a massive shock. It was very sudden. 
Um, so I had to kind of work with those feelings of grief and isolation throughout the lockdown um, and also experiencing sibling loss, which at the time when I when I tried to kind of look online, I found it was more, well, less talked about than other types of grief. So I guess I just wanted to bring my story to the table. Um, there was already a very important conversation um, happening online, particularly through the Instagram space. I could see all of the amazing work and yeah, all I wanted to do was just kind of sprinkle my story in there and connect with others. And ultimately through um, bringing together the various aspects of my life. So for example, I've hosted charity supper clubs before and I have a lot of creative friends where I'd love to host kind of workshops where we can um, share our grief in a tangible way through mediums of art. I just thought, you know what? I have the restaurant space, why not um, put together some supper club events? So hopefully once these restrictions finally get sorted out and the lockdown comes to an end, I'll be able to connect with some of the amazing people I've found through the online grief community. Um, and I guess the, the reason for me even wanting to do this was um, as a continuation of my sister's legacy. So Saima was a passionate advocate for uh, cancer in young people and also um, within BAME communities because it is a really taboo topic, particularly just terminal illness in general. So grief is a collective kind of process in uh, South Asian communities. However, terminal illness is kind of overlooked and it's a bit, um, there's a shame factor to it. So my sister very much spoke a lot and wrote as well about, about these topics. And yeah, she just did some fantastic work. She also um, created a BAME cancer support group and co-hosted her own podcast called Fresh to Death, um, which is through the BBC. And she started the dialogue around grief and death before she passed away. So for me, this is uh, my way of honoring her and continuing her work. So. That's me. Absolutely, Nafisa. And, and we've had conversations about it before and it goes back to digital footprint, doesn't it? And the digital footprint that your sister left behind was just monumental. And you're continuing that. And not only are you continuing that, you're continuing it in your own way. Um, and I, I really cannot wait to see what the future looks like for you and the collaborations that come together. And yeah it's exciting it's blooming exciting um i'm gonna pass over to a lovely lovely friend of mine who um in this last year we've worked really closely together and created a really lovely friendship and um, so shuma it's your time babes <laughs> thank you amber hi guys my name is shuma um i lost my mum when i was 23 she passed away when she was 55 from triple negative breast cancer originally she was diagnosed in 2013 um but unfortunately the cancer came back multiple tumors in her brain other lungs as well her lungs and around her stomach so it was quite aggressive when she passed away um just touching on what Nafisa said in the South Asian community, it's a huge, huge taboo, the, the cancer world, just grief and all sorts. So early on in my journey in grief, I found that I wasn't able to express myself. And if I tried, it was something that was brushed underneath the carpet quite quickly. Um, I was told to always remain strong, pray, have faith and so on. Um, so yeah, the first few years, I never really had an outlet for my grief and all the heartache and pain that I was feeling. Um, so I think it was the beginning of the pandemic, probably actually March, yeah, March 2020, when I thought about finding an outlet for myself. I tried various things um, which worked in the short term, like in the short run, but I came up with spoken grief because I thought it was just another way to be able to express myself. I didn't know the grief community was a thing, and I think. Um, but it was the same view as well. We we didn't know it really existed. So yeah, I've created Spoken Grief on Instagram. It's just somewhere that I started to express my feelings, thoughts, memories of my mum, any experiences I've had during my journey. And yeah, recently I started a podcast as well. So I'm now expressing in another sort of way. And yeah, I just hope to continue to be a representative voice within my community and 
every community that feels that they can resonate with my journey and grief overall. So yeah, that's me. Absolutely. Thank you, Shuma. Thank you so much. And um, obviously we've gone into our communities and how we've created them, but I want to, obviously within our communities, we, we are, we're providing a space, we're providing a service and stuff like that. But I wanted to ask you guys, what has your community, what does it mean to you? And what has it done for you and your grief? So I'll go first. I know that my community, I started the Grief Gang podcast solely for me. I thought I've got all these messed up thoughts in my head and I just need to like verbal diarrhea them. I need to get them out. I'm not good at writing. I'm not good at drawing, expressing, but I thought I'm good at talking. Um, so I did that. And I just want to sort of know, ask you guys, you know, some, um, some of us, you know, we're doing this for years or, fairly recently but how do you think if you can look back to what your grief and how you addressed it before you started your community and your page and whatever it may be what does it look like now and how do you think your community has played a part in that jump in whoever well I'll, I'll just quickly start by saying it actually helps me um, but it helps my grief you know the, the the support groups are brilliant because they support so many people but they support me too and you know, I, I owe it to the Good Grief Sessions in particular for how well I have processed my grief in these last well, three years since we've been running them. You know, I know um, Ben feels similarly, you know, it's, it, it gives me the platform that I needed, that I didn't know I needed. You know, like meeting Ben was, was massive for my grief because it, you know, I, I spoke, as I said, I spoke to everyone about my dad we've all had that feeling of feeling a little bit like you're a burden or oh, they don't want to listen to this or you know I remember speaking to one person in particular who showed such disdain about what I was saying and it just really was like oh god I, you know this isn't welcome here this conversation but with Ben with good grief with you guys I know that that's my place not that I haven't got other places as well but that is specifically for my grief and yeah that's that's helped me massively absolutely yeah I can I can testament to that as well I mean I've definitely the charity and attending attending TNN good grief groups I kind of attended sort of just well when I first met Jack and Ben I recorded with them and then later on in that evening they were holding uh, one of their meetings so when we could do things in person pre pre lockdown and they said oh do you want to stay do you want to stay and I went oh yeah go on then why not and um I stayed and I remember leaving and I was like this is insane like this is a, a room full of people talking about their grief so openly and I felt I felt like a weight had been lifted off my shoulder even though I didn't even really speak that much just being present within these people who were so authentic and open I thought if they can do it I can do it and I think that's penultimately what we are trying to do with our communities really isn't it um how about you Shuma what about you in your community like I think for me I find that all those little thoughts that I think is really abnormal or I really started off thinking well I can't really express that without the judgment people feeling awkward around me I've now found this community that make me feel normal and I feel less alien in this world where you know people still do feel quite uncomfortable to talk about grief but I think one thing that I've noticed quite recently as a reflection is initially on spoken grief I wasn't really present in terms of like my face and showing myself and that was since my mum passed away I feel I've lost a lot of confidence and like in terms of my self-identity I don't feel like who I was before quite naturally but over the last I'd say three to four months I've felt so comfortable in this community online and it's had a massive impact on me finding myself again and I think that is so powerful in itself and that's just from other people feeling similar emotions to me and making me feel comfortable again so it's been really great for me and yeah I would be I don't know where I'd be without it yeah I feel you there I, I feel I was sort of the same in, in a in the beginning I sort of didn't really show my face I was just also my was more vocal um and then I found the more that I did share personally um which I kind of thought sometimes I thought the people don't want to know this they don't want to know this or they're not interested but they are and it's not about sometimes even whether they're interested or not you don't know what you sharing a little bit about you know story of your loved one um 
or a conversation that you have gone out into you know your everyday life and spoken to someone or you, you say for example I've written about when I've had a really tough conversation with somebody in my life and I've written about it on the Instagram and just gone mad on it to me I'm just dumping I'm just brain dumping but to somebody else they're looking and thinking okay well mama can do it then do you know what I'm gonna give it a go um and it's wonderful to see and it's yeah I'd be lost for my community either as well it's um it's something that I wish I started so much sooner but hey everything everything's for a reason isn't it um did anybody else want to touch on like what the community was done for you and your grief or and yeah so um the kind of grief community itself has been amazing um like Jack mentioned in terms of processing my feelings of grief I'm still obviously in the kind of raw early stages um as it has been less than a year so I allow myself um significant breaks from the grief space too just so I can digest how I am really feeling um but it's just been amazing to connect with others and to see pieces of content that I can resonate with and this huge part of my life which is my grief um I feel that it's been seen and it's been heard and by sharing my story <laughs> my story authentically I've been able to have others um who are experiencing sibling loss in their 20s reach out to me and be so grateful that I've taken the time to share my story and then they share their stories with me and I just I feel so honored and yeah just so thankful for the space um it's really it is really hard to put into words but it's just so unbelievably supportive and I find the whole grief community um online grief space is just the most real the most genuine space and platform around and um you don't get things such as you know filters or falsified stories do you it's just amazing it's just raw isn't it it's so raw. there are times when it can be like whoa this is this is some heavy stuff but it's just so authentic and you touch on something really important there about being seen and heard. I think as human beings, that's all we want in our entirety, to be heard, seen and heard in our complete entirety. And I think in the online grief safe space, so grief safe space and plug in, plug in stuff there, uh, on the online grief space is exactly what the mission is. And I think especially what you're doing, Nafisa, um, with sibling loss, which when you have spoken about, um, obviously my loss is, is parental loss um, but amongst the community I've connected with people from all different types of losses and the one thing that I um, register and acknowledge the most within sibling loss is that it often does get pushed to the side and then you've spoken about this of how when when a sibling is lost the immediate sort of attention does go to towards the parent and of course there is sympathies and condolences towards a sibling but it is predominantly on the parent and I love that with what you're doing you're going no eyes on me I I've, I've lost my sister too I've lost my sibling I want to talk about it this is somebody that you grew up with for your whole life um you know your right arm um and yeah I think it's really important um what you're doing and you're going you're you're, you're refusing to be pushed into the corner which I think penultimately is what we're, we are going We all don't want to be silenced, do we? Especially me, I'm a loud mouth, so sorry about that. Um, I want to ask you guys, so obviously we're, set, we're standing here now talking about this, but, you know, we're talking about our community, something like that, but what would you say to somebody who's sitting on the, on the fence a little bit about getting involved with your community, coming to a session, coming to a good grief talk, what would you say that would give them a little bit of peace of mind and a real visualisation of what to expect? I'm going to go straight in with Ben. Give, just paint, paint the scene, paint the scene. Thanks. I was hoping to answer the last question. But oh, I'll I'll move on to this one. It's fine. Um, you know, I think... Um, look, I think loss is scary. Grief is scary. Like, um, when we're... You know, when we lose someone that we care about, it's it it it, it puts us in such a strange place. It, you know, it's such a in a space that we 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 you know we we don't really understand or know anything about. And when you start to kind of acknowledge and and look into the community, what you'll find is a lot of people who are being open and are showing themselves and are, um, are showing their truths that's empowering and what i would say to anyone who is thinking about 
maybe joining a session or engaging with the community or speaking with people is that at the moment, everything that you're experiencing feels really scary. But when you come together with a group of people who have been through similar things to you, you start to realize that you're not alone. And that actually by speaking and sharing and listening to others, you're empowering yourself. And you're also giving yourself the opportunity to understand what it is that you're going through. So if we have an experience and we hide away and we don't open up to other people, we can never really start to understand exactly what it is that we've been through because we're not able to have the conversations to listen to other people to, to kind of say our, our piece and make sense of it. But when we come into this community and when you talk with other people, you actually realise what's happening, what you're going through, what you're experiencing, why what you're feeling is the way that you're feeling. Um, so, you know, to anyone who is considering or thinking about engaging with this community or is you know sat on the fence or unsure um you know i would say to to take a chance because you'll start to understand what it is that you're going through yourself and you'll realize that you're not on your own and that it's not scary it's horrible some days but it's not scary and there are loads of people who want to listen to you, who want to talk to you and want to understand what you've been through. So, you know, I would encourage them to, to take that chance. Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, I think often in grief, and especially if you've gone through experiences where you've just been constantly shut down with your grief, where you've been constantly told, no, we don't speak about that, or just really brushed to the corner, you almost so maybe wouldn't believe your luck that there is a space like this that really actually wants to hear what you've got to say. You think, no, that can't be real. And, and as Shuma touched on earlier, when we, when we started our communities, we didn't realise how many people are here who, who want to who wanna hear our stories and hear what we've got to say. Um, and then it just opens the lid and then it never shuts again, does it? Um, Shuma, can I ask you sort of like, what can people expect from yours? Obviously, I know that you do um, the Spoken Grief Scrapbook. And it's something that I absolutely love when it comes into my grid. When I see spoken grief and the scrapbook come up, I'm like, oh, what is this? And although it can be really heavy, and obviously it's, it's really sad sometimes, um, that that offering that you give, I think, is so empowering. So it gives us a little bit about what people can expect if they come to your page and um, the sort of things you have gotten through and entry through the scrapbook um, submissions. Yeah, so on Spoken Grief, as you've just explained, we've got like the scrapbook thing and it started from just me reminiscing about like photos from the past with mum and it just it was just a little concept I had and a lot of people find comfort in sharing their loved ones and photos of their loved ones, obviously. Um, and I think it was like an, like an add-on thing that I've done from my um, Spoken Grief, like grief story. So started off with grief stories and then there's a scrapbook. So I think for a lot of people where they are sitting on the fence and I was one of those people to be honest like I never thought that I'm quite a quiet individual so I never thought that I'd be running a page and speaking so open about my vulnerabilities but I think now the way I see it is the worst thing that could have happened has already happened and I find strength in that to then join a community and now run an, um, an online community. But um, like Ben said, you've just got to take a chance. And I just don't, I personally think like we have nothing to lose in sharing our grief with one another. Even if everyone's story is different, there is always one thing that you will find comfort in. And if not, you'll learn something new about grief in general. So, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think, and sometimes as well, you can think that your your loss is, of course, all our losses are all independent and unique in their own right. But you do think, you think, I am the only person who has gone through maybe like this type of loss, or I'm the only person who was this young when someone in their life died. Um, and it's almost a bit of a reality check when you come into the grief space and you're like, no, you're not. But then it's an equally, it's a big hug to know that you're not the only person and there is someone out there who's been through something really similar to you. Um, and the fees as well, supper clubs, what can people expect when they come to a supper club? Like, I want to know, because I'm coming. Yes, definitely. I can't wait to have you there. Well, all of you guys there, basically. But um, 
So with the Supper Club concept, obviously, we are celebrating being together around food and, you know, Masala Wala Cafe, it's authentic Pakistani home cooking. Um, head chef is my mum. So that's just a plug. And yes, yeah, so for us, you know, home food, food for the soul, cooked with love, um, a lot of issues can be discussed at the table and food is a really important thing for my family particularly the fact that the restaurant was founded by my sister who passed away Simon Thompson so I'm just trying to bring it all together and yeah we've just hosted supper clubs before on behalf of charities and I thought you know what what I can see happening really well is just connecting with some of these amazing people within the grief community but also offline as well um, so I just want to invite people into my space, essentially an extension of my home, to be able to just talk about grief or, or not talk about it, ultimately just to listen and to hear other people's stories, to understand it's not as scary, well, as you know, Ben said, it's not as scary as you think, and it doesn't have to be this kind of morbid, heavy topic, you, you know, you can you can uplift each other through sharing your stories. Um and the idea for tying in the workshop element was the fact that there are creative means to express grief for when words don't serve you well. Um, so there's things such as art therapy um, or just literally doodling away and, you know, create, creating things together. So that's kind of what I want to bring to the table with the supper clubs. Yeah, I can't wait for it. It's going to be, as you say, sometimes you don't, you don't have to speak. And I think um, just observing be it you're just observing um, an Instagram page, you're, you're kind of keeping up to date with what they're doing. You could attend one of the supper clubs, just observe, just come check what it's about. Likewise as well, come and join, um, join on, on TNN's groups. Um, I can't say that I didn't come and was silent from the beginning. <laughs> I, was, I was like, right, I've got things to talk about. I need to offload. Um, but there are people who come and they don't speak for weeks. And boys, you can attest to this. They don't speak for weeks. And then there's something that just clicks. And, and then it's like the lid's taken off. And I love when that lid gets taken off because you can just see it all coming out. But for all the right reasons. Absolutely. I mean, the, the benefit, I mean, I'm a sucker for in-person meetings. I love them. I love being in front of people and, and speaking and hearing and feeling the grief that's coming off that individual. But the, the benefit of, of doing what we're doing now and being sat at laptops is that if I wanted to, I could turn my camera off now and, and no one would see. And that's exactly the same for our meetings. You know, it's it, it can be anonymous if you want it to be. We we never put any pressure on anyone to uh, to speak. We always insist on one thing, however, and that's that you introduce yourself uh, the, the person or people that you're there to remember and your pronouns. Uh, and, and what Ben and I perhaps didn't appreciate when we kind of introduced the introduction side to our meetings was just how monumental that could seem to some people. I was in a position where I thought it was just a nice way to get to know each other and to find out what your name is, you know, the, the basics. But we, you know, we had, we had an attendee come pretty quickly after we launched who had never even said out loud that her dad had died. So by just almost saying it you know putting it out there it, it was the next step along her grief journey and, and understanding that this this was her new normal sorry to give a real cheesy plug but you know that that is ultimately the, the benefits of our groups is that there isn't any pressure to talk and I think we say a lot it's as much uh, an experience in listening as it is in talking you can gain just as much from our meetings by being there and listening I'm really sorry I'm competing with some really noisy seagulls at the moment so if you see any flying around or hear any you know at least I've, I've told you now <laughs> brilliant love that um Amber, i just want to jump in there as well because there's one thing that um that the online meetings actually um for people attending the online meetings is something that they can really benefit from when we do our in-person meetings which we will bring back and um, we will start to do in-person meetings again but online will be the main kind of focus for us moving forward it, but if you come to a, a, an in-person meeting and you don't want to speak, you kind of, the opportunity then isn't there to communicate with people, um, apart from maybe in the break or at the end or at the beginning. If you come to an online meeting and you choose not to speak, the chat function, as you well know, people talk non-stop throughout the meeting in there. And it's really beautiful to see when someone decides do you know what I'm going to come and I'm going to listen and then you see them finding their confidence 
to be able to share their experience in that way. And people grow into meetings. You know, it's, it's like we're talking about, it's taking that first step. Um, you know, grief is isolating until you realise that you're not alone. And you realise that by coming to the meetings, by, you know, listening to other people, by sharing your story. And, um, you know, but that's, the, for me, one of, the, one of the really lovely things about um, online meetings is that you can talk and you can be present, but you don't have to speak out loud. You can do it that way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, from what I've been, the sessions I've been in, I've sat there and blubbed at the comments. We've sat there and we've poured our hearts out in the comments because sometimes words fail, you don't know. Words are so feeble sometimes. Words speaking, sometimes you just don't have the words for that feeling that is in your chest. And sometimes just getting in that comment section and just going, blah, 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 can do all the world wonders. Um, I wanted to ask you guys next. So this sort of like, you know, having a good off think about things. Um, how do you think that the online community and more specifically the young and bereaved like young community has changed the way that we speak we speak about grief and death like I think like I'm what generation am I like I have no idea I'm young still but like you know but I think the there's the younger generation even below me the way just it's, it's almost like they're like, I don't care if people think this is awkward to speak about. I'm going to talk about it. And it's like this brazenness, this, this ballsiness that I just adore. Because they're like, I'm, I lost somebody that I love and I'm going to speak about it. And I think especially in the UK, we, you know, we've been very, I'd say, you know, climatised, stiff upper lip. You know, you get on your head, your head down, you, you've got to keep them proud, stuff like that. But this younger generation, they've gone, nah, nah, mate, I ain't doing that. Um, so what within like your community do you think you recognize of how um the space and those young people amongst it a change in the way that we talk about it? So Amber, just to clarify, I think you're a centennial hun. Um, but definitely I've seen the kind of change already just through some of the messages I've received. Um so I have a diverse range of you know ages of people following me, and I've just had stories of you know parental loss miscarriages all of this stuff and through I guess Instagram being that connecting space that it's not just one generation on there there's about three or four generations it's creating this dialogue so this grief community is stirring up a conversation amongst generations and also empowering others to bring that conversation into the real world. So from their phone, looking at Instagram, they might have seen something and then later that week, they might feel empowered to just open up a dialogue with their parents or, you know, an auntie or an uncle um, about something that they were not talking about at all. And I just do believe that this kind of, this online space is connecting the generations. So like you said, the younger generation, they literally don't give a hoot, do they? They just say what they want and speak their truths constantly left, right and centre. I say this like I'm old and haggard. I'm like, oh, you know, the young ones. I think I'm still young, I'm 24. Anyway, um, but it is just amazing. And I just think what's happening here is, yeah, a kind of, uh, what's the word a connection amongst the um generations and yeah an opening of that dialogue yeah I think absolutely that um you're absolutely right that there is there's multiple different generations and ages amongst the online community speaking telling their truths and I think the younger generation they're inspiring they're inspiring some people who you know might not have spoken about their grief I've had messages from people who'd be like I had one lady before saying that I haven't spoken about my grief for 10 years and you've inspired me to do that. And I was like, whoa, that's insane. Like just me chatting rubbish about my grief has inspired somebody to, after 10 years, a decade, speak about their grief. Like that was, whoo, that was a good one. Anybody else? Go on. I was just going to add, it's become, social media has become such a powerful tool these days, especially like, I don't think I'm young anymore. I'm old. I'll just say it. <laughs> but when I was in school, I don't, I, I remember having MSN and it, it's just completely different now. <laughs> That's 
<laughs> I am really old, aren't I? Um, no, but what I was trying to say is it's become such a powerful tool, tool. So with things going on around the world as well, so whether it's lost through a war, lost through, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement, there's so many types of loss. But I think when the pandemic first started, I think that shifted a whole it just shifted everything completely because the whole world world was at a halt and this collective grief whether you have lost someone through covid or you know during the pandemic itself you you were faced with especially in the uk the the death rates every day whether you wanted to hear it or not it was in our faces and i think with the social with social media and people now feeling like you know, they've been part of this pandemic where things have stopped completely. They've now taken it to another level where they feel that like they can express themselves, and especially on Instagram, where there are multiple pages. We use our our stories and unspoken grief. I'll I'll put out polls every other day. And what whilst it's not someone actively, you know, sharing a picture or their story by clicking yes, no, a few words to describe how you're feeling today by the end of a pot like a day or where I've done polls and spoken grief I'll get messages like thank you so much for validating how I've been feeling for such a long time and it's like it's just a direct message to me and it means all like everything to them so it's just like the way like everything is happening in the world to then how social media is such a powerful tool and then how you can interact in different ways. So sometimes it might not be a photo. It might not be a story. It might literally just be yes and no questions on an inter- interactive story on Instagram. So, yeah, it's just it's a, just a different ball game now from MSN days for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so right. MSN who? This is a new ball game, honey. Like, <laughs> we didn't come to play. Um, Jack or Ben, do you want to add anything before I go into my last favourite question? Uh, I was actually, I just want to say, Shuma, I didn't even have MSN, um, so I'm with you. Uh, um, I uh, I think one of the things that's really interesting that it, over the last year, Shuma, you know, touching on the kind of pandemic and, um, and the kind of collective grief that you're speaking about, it, people aren't just grieving for um, the, you know, people who have passed or people who have died collectively the world's grieving for a life that they once had so all of a sudden people are starting to tap into the idea of what grief actually is so previously you know a lot of people didn't understand what that was that's my cat <laughs> that's what it was we we knew ben has have, has three cats so it was only right that one of them would hijack jack do you want to jump on <laughs> I, yeah i mean i can't uh, you're gonna to have to forgive me because that was a point that Ben was making that I don't think I really can carry on from. I, I'm right. the time because I think he's going to articulate what he was going to say far better. Oh, if it's not seagulls, it's cats. Come oh, on, get back on. Lovely, he is lovely. Um, so, so what I was saying is that all of a sudden the world has um, learned how to grieve. They're they're being forced to grieve. This is Davith, by the way. This is one of three of our cats. He is very needy at times. Um, So I apologise for him now hijacking this. Um, And the point I was going to make, but the point I was trying to make, uh, which is is about the world all of a sudden understands grief. Um, Previously, people had kind of not really understood what it was and the grief community had been a, a you know a, a small corner but all of a sudden everyone's kind of grieving something so it's either they're grieving the loss of someone they know or they're grieving um, a job that they've lost or they're grieving a life that they lived you know even down to the people who are just desperate to get back down the pub with their mates they're grieving their Saturday nights or their Sunday afternoons you know so um so grief has all of a sudden become something that people understand and resonates a little bit better with the wider world Um, and then to add to that you have young people who are so willing and I say young people because as I said I wasn't even part really of the MSN generation Um, but um, I know what it is Uh, I had a MySpace um, for about two weeks and then it wasn't cool anymore apparently Um, but um, but yeah you know there's a, there's a group of there's a group of young people who are so willing to speak so openly about their grief and one of the reasons we set the new normal up was because we wanted to change the way that people spoke about grief 
we didn't want to just start a conversation about grief. We wanted to take grief into the everyday. So we wanted everyone to be able to speak openly about their loss, you know, their lives, what it is, whatever it is that they've lost, whatever it is that they've become comfortable with. <laughs> that was a bit of a tale. Right, um, been hijacked. I know, it's so typical of Davith to turn up as soon as he knows that I'm on a call. Um, but, you know, we, we are striving too. And we're a part of a community that is collectively together striving towards trying to normalise the conversations around grief so that we don't have to be in online forums, so that we don't have to be on virtual calls or, you know, in a community centre in North London or in, in a WeWork office somewhere or, you know, over a table in a restaurant, as lovely as those things are. We want people to be able to talk openly all of the time about what they're experiencing without feeling uncomfortable or without feeling, like Jack said at the beginning, that it wasn't a space where he was able to take a conversation that was so important to him. Yeah. Um, and the younger people, the younger uh, generations are having those conversations in a more open way. And what we're trying to do is help educate everyone along the way to bring those conversations to the fore so that we can all collectively speak openly about the things that we want to talk about. Absolutely, Benny boy. Absolutely. Ever, ever the articulate, aren't you? Love it. Oh, look, he's kissing his cat now. Jesus. Um, all right, last question from me, because I've just checked the questions and we have got some good, good questions. And of course, I want to leave us time for you to plug your stuff and everybody can find you. So this is a question that I ask at the end of every podcast recording that I do with a guest. And boys, you'll remember this. Shuma, you'll remember this. And Nafisa, so your time is coming soon. Don't worry. Um, so it is. If you could go back and tell your freshly bereaved self some good solid advice what would it be give it to me in a sentence go if you were stood there right in front of you when your person just died what would you be like you'd be holding them you'd be like babe here here's the crack <laughs> i would be like girl slow it down because i was trying to take on way too much too quickly um i'm the youngest of four sisters but i had this kind of urge to look after everyone else all of a sudden it just didn't make any sense. So I'd be like, yeah, slow it down, mate. Slow it down. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I can I can feel that too. AJ, I'd say live today. Don't live yesterday. Don't live tomorrow. Live today. You know, take it as it comes, but don't think too far ahead and don't think too far back. Love that, Jack. Love it. I would say everything you're feeling is normal. Just take it easy and you will be okay. Amazing. Benny Boy gone. Leave us with a with a golden nugget for these questions. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't um, give myself any advice. Um, and the reason being is because uh, I think that um, in all of the you know in all of the good and bad moments, um, I've learned so much. Uh, so I wouldn't wanna I wouldn't wanna cheat. I'm quite happy to I'm quite happy to have lived the experiences I've lived in the way that I've lived them and find out for myself and, and yeah and and through all of the brilliant people that I've met I can feel that yeah I, I think what I'd say to myself is oh my god don't be so angry at the world probably um don't be so angry chill out like chill out um and yeah I kind of agree with you there Ben yeah sort of um just go with the flow everything is meant to be felt along this along this ride and you will be where you are meant to be um so i've just checked the questions and um, we've got some we've got some good juicy questions in here um the first one is and i think this is quite interesting do you ever feel really vulnerable after sharing your experience with other people offline or online i think that's a good one. i'd say it's it's sometimes when it's something really really personal to me and i share it i just think oh god but um nine times out of ten the reception that is always received and I think sometimes I don't after a while I don't really care what the reception is like because it's it's my truth and it's my story and I'm like there's no I'm not asking for an opinion here this is a fact so if you don't like it lump it can I can I be honest AJ I, I wholeheartedly agree and and maybe this isn't the answer that that individual is looking for but no I don't feel overly vulnerable because I'm the same it you know the reason I guess 
Ben and I got on so well was because we just spoke authentically about our dads. There was no, you know, like, oh, I'm fine, mate. Like, if I'm upset, I tell Ben I'm upset. Like, I'll text him. I really miss my old man today, mate. You know, and, and something that I like to say, we all like to say in group, is that we don't believe in oversharing. We absolutely believe in under-listening. You know, you can under-listen to someone, but you can't overshare. You know, people will say, oh, it's a, a byproduct of anxiety to overshare, but that's that's not on. You know, like, if, if someone's oversharing, they need the space to be heard and we big believers at that at CNN, you know, there is no oversharing, only under listening. Yeah, absolutely. Love that. Um, one of the next questions, do you have any suggestions for people who are scared to open up to others or uncomfortable asking for support? I'd say um, just be, you know, careful and mindful with who you choose first to open up to. Um, obviously friends that you trust and, hopefully you can open up to your family but if that's not the case um try to look you know for charities and platforms such as ta tnn um reaching out to these kind of places on the online community um because yeah i think i think you can get a lot of support through even just dropping a message you don't necessarily have to attend a session or an event first you can just slide into the dms and say like hey hey guys um i'm struggling with this or struggling with opening up and you will you know you will get a response so yeah absolutely um I, I think for a lot from what people in my community what I've seen is some people they've started off within the community they've they have observed it they've absorbed everything they can get from that and then with that it gives them the power and the you know and the and the knowledge because half the time when we can't articulate to the people in our lives who we really want to say I feel really sad about this it's because we don't have the language and we can't we don't know how to say this really hurts in here it really hurts and I don't know what to do about it and when you see people when you can come to a community and you see people online um who are sort of I read some things and I go that is how I'm feeling that's how because sometimes I don't even have the words how to describe it um and then with that if I wanted to share that with somebody in my personal life I know people who've just like sent my stuff to people they've gone I just sent your post to my friend who I've been really struggling with to communicate with and I just said this is how I feel and then it opened up you know the floodgates to them having a really open and honest conversation um so yeah, I sort of say to people come online learn the language know what sort of is speaking to you and if you can take that into your everyday life, go for it. And um, what else have we got? Da, da, da. Can you recommend any good reading for young people? I know, Jack, you're an avid reader. I mean, straight away, anything by Matt Haig. I mean, that's not, uh, you know, I'm not... It's not breaking news. Matt Haig is a very, very good mental health author. His, his stuff is great. My favourite book ever is reasons to stay alive it's a real a trigger warning it's 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 about somebody um who attempts to take their own life it's a true story it's it's matt Haig. it's you know he he's quite open and honest about his struggles with mental health and, and how he, he nearly took his own life when he was young but it's a it's like a monologue it's it's a message to himself from the future it's him writing it now to the person he was then and giving the reasons to stay alive you know the fact that you will have conversations with people you've never met the fact that you'll hear music that you've never heard before you'll, you'll dance in ways that you've never danced it's just it's beautiful and you know, I think everyone should read it. I don't think you need to necessarily struggle with, with mental health to in, enjoy that book. And, and it, it will help you understand a little more. And, you know, that mental health is obviously, I've, I've struggled with my mental health as a result of my dad dying. I, I had anxiety. I still have anxiety. Um, I live with it. And, you know, reading the account of someone that, you know, really was at the edge of, of life, um, it's inspiring. So, yeah, Reasons to Stay Alive by Matt Haig. That would be the first book I recommend anyone to read, let alone young yeah. readers. Love that, love that. I mean, I, I've read so many books. I'm trying to think of the top of my head. I mean, like, I read a book and then I can't like, completely forget about it. I'm really bad. Um, but I know there's so many accounts that have created um, like pure guidelines and guides of all these books. Um, so yeah, I'm sure on, on the online green space, there's so many um, uh, bits of knowledge for you there. Um, one for both Jack and Ben and specific to the charity. So give a little bit of info here. Um, I'm interested in going to an It's Complicated meetup, but worried about upsetting other people in the group. What's your experience of going to them? And do you have any advice how to participate? Uh, 
I obviously I don't know what it is that you are worried about upsetting people with, but um, it's complicated as a space that is specifically designed um, for you know more complicated relationships. Um, you know we have people in that space who have lost people, um, who have taken their own lives, um, people who have ultimately died from addiction, um, people with estranged relationships uh, with the people that they've lost, um, homicide. Uh, you know, these are these are, are interesting and quite difficult topics. And um, from being in that space, I know that um, it doesn't matter who you are or who you've lost or how you've lost them. Um, it's a non-judgmental space. All of our spaces are non-judgmental. We're not, no one's there to pull apart who you are or your grief or how you feel. People are there to listen to you and to help support you in, ever, in whichever way you need. Um, you know, my advice to you would be to to come, to listen, you know, to observe a meeting and to and to kind of see where you feel you fit. And when you're ready, if you want to share, then share. But don't think that you're going to offend anyone because you're not. No one will be offended by you being open um at all absolutely then thank you um right i'm conscious of time but this last one i think is really interesting and then i, I do want to leave about two minutes so we can do our instagram or anything like that so this one says i've noticed that people today and young people in particular seem to be increasingly uncomfortable with using the words death died and dying preferring passed or passed away in conversation i will always try to reflect the term that the person bereaved is comfortable with but do others share my concern that we see more and more averse to talk about death and dying? Um, I mean, to this, I think it's... Uh, <laughs> if somebody says death, died, dying, passed or passed away, um, I don't really, I don't think, I, I kind of disagree with sort of how that could be averse to talking about death and dying. Um, passed and died are the exact same thing. Um, so I'm not, I'm, for me, I think whatever the person is comfortable with um because they say past or passing doesn't mean they neglect the fact that the person's died like they're I'm fully aware fully aware I think I think there's it's that idea you know we've we've been commended before for using the word diet you know oh my dad died and people have said to me oh it's so refreshing that you that you speak so openly that he died and uh, you know I think that's perhaps the point you know and Although I can I can understand the concern I'm with you, AJ. I think the fact that anyone will speak about the, their loved one or their person passing away is 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 better than the person not speaking about it at all, you know. And and I think it's it's choice of preference. It's it's whatever makes you feel comfortable. Because of course it, it can be quite uncomfortable for someone to say, "Oh my my such and such diet," you know. It's it's about that. You know, I, I take you back to that story of of the person that introduced herself and said that her dad had had died and it was the first time she'd said it you know the fact that she said it at all is 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 fantastic so yeah I understand the concern but it doesn't no I don't think it's that much of a concern to me I'm interested to hear what other people think though although we have only got 10 seconds before two minutes yeah no yeah, it's, it's an interesting topic it's an interesting one but um yeah I'm going to leave this last two minutes for everybody to plug their stuff but firstly guys thank you so much for doing this and getting involved it has been wonderful to be here and speak with you all and to share what you do like I said in the beginning I love what you do I love you guys you're all you know change makers and I'm so blessed and honoured to know you all and the community in itself um so before we go let's plug it in um anything that people need to know that's coming um yeah I'm Amber Jeffrey at the grief gang on Instagram um search me up on my podcast on apple spotify anything like that and you know plug me in your ears plug yourselves go uh yeah um so jack and i are the new normal um charity so we are at tnn charity on instagram um and twitter not that you want to go on our twitter um it is bad um but um but yeah so you can find us on there um if you have any questions about any groups and please do get in touch we run meetings um four out of seven nights a week um across the a, a virtual so you can join from anywhere you just we will, sorry sorry AJ. oh we will we, sorry, we will be launching Lockdown Loss next month. That's the new meeting that we were we wanted, wanted to bring to you. 
yeah, absolutely, yes. Um, yeah, I'm excited for that and for that new space, everybody. Um, Shuma, go. Um, so at Spoken Grief, you can share your mem- favourite memories, your grief stories. You can interact on your um, on my Instagram story with all the questions I have to ask. And I've also got the Spoken Grief podcast, which is very new and very excited to get some guests going on that. So I'm going to leave the last few seconds for Nafisa. <laughs> Hello, hello. Um, At Goodness Gracious Grief, um, I have an exhibition in the making alongside a dear photographer friend um, to kind of express what grief looks like um, with a lens of cancer and young people. You can find out more on my Instagram. Oh my God, the time. And also uh, I'm launching a podcast called What The Funk, not necessarily just grief, but... (laughs) That's all right. Yeah, not necessarily just grief, um, kind of tackling all sorts of topics. So yeah, um, watch this space. Lovely. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> and Jeffrey. This has been the Grief Gang, Young and Marie. Take care. Bye.